All right, let's do a quick recap here. Taxonomy is the science of classifying organisms. 2,400 years ago, Aristotle was the first guy to classify organisms. He classified them into plants and animals. Then we came uh, along with Linnaeus, who lived in the 1700s. And he came up with the system of kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. All these categories. Because remember, Aristotle only divided them into two categories, plants and animals. So Linnaeus came along and he made a lot more categories. He also developed binomial nomenclature, that scientific name. Remember we said a scientific name. The first word of the scientific name is the genus, and the second word is the species and we capitalize the first word. So if you look at these examples, um, this is a, looks like a platypus. The first word here is capitalized and the second word is not. And the first word um, and the second word are both italicized. And then we also talked about the things that scientists use in order to determine how things are classified. So they use DNA, physical features, and embryos. So today we're going to talk about how they actually classify things. So this is your first slide that you need to write down. So you should have your notebooks out. If you want to uh, continue with your notes, you can just continue and add these on. Uh, or you can just title it classification again. We don't have a very specific title for today, but it's just how do we classify our own living things on this earth. How did we end up classifying them? What is our classification system? So at the top, we have the three domains of life. So back when I was showing you guys the, that PowerPoint, some of you might remember, wow, that's really, really big. Some of you might remember we had a triangle. It was an upside down triangle. And domain was the top piece. It was the biggest one. It included the most organisms. So this would be like when you guys classified the um, items on the board into transportation and buildings or houses and cars, right? It's two big categories. They still have a lot of things in them. In this case, we have three big categories, three things that we divide all living things up into. First one is bacteria. You guys know what bacteria are, all right? We've talked about them a little bit, but they're the little things that are responsible for helping you digest your food. They also help um, create yogurt and beer and cheese, and um, they can also make you sick. So these are prokaryotes. What's a prokaryote? Prokaryote is a cell or an, um, that does not have a nucleus. So some of you might have heard pro means no. So prokaryote means no nucleus, all right? So bacteria is the first category. Now, the second category. The second category is kind of similar to bacteria. They're also prokaryote, so they're microscopic um, and they don't have a nucleus, but they're ancient bacteria. Now, when I say ancient, I don't mean that they lived a long time ago and now they're extinct. They still live now. But these are the microorganisms that scientists think first inhabited the Earth. Those single-celled organisms that later developed into the life that we know today. So these are organisms that can live in really harsh environments. We talked about the environment of the Earth in the beginning, how there was lava and not a lot of atmosphere and no oxygen. So these are called archaea. And archaea are ancient prokaryotes, and they're able to live in really harsh environments. So what kind of environments are we talking about? We're talking about deep sea vents in the bottom of the ocean, or really salty places, or really hot places, where normally bacteria wouldn't be able to live. You guys know that bacteria can't live in really hot places. This is why we cook our food. And they tell you, oh, don't eat raw cookie dough, or don't eat raw meat. That's because bacteria typically likes to live on that stuff. And say, for example, you had a steak, all right, and you could either store it in the freezer or on your counter, right? Which one would where you where would you store it? You'd probably store it in your freezer. That's because bacteria 
they don't really like the cold. They like it to just to be warm enough, but not too hot. So if you set that steak out on the counter, it's going to get a lot of bacteria growing on it, and then it's going to get all moldy, all right? Now, in the event that there was a little bacteria, you could always put it in the oven, and um, that would kill most of the bacteria. So archaea are ancient prokaryotes that are able to live in really harsh environments where bacteria normally wouldn't survive. So if, for example, this wouldn't happen, but if, for example, you had archaea on your steak and you wanted to cook it, they might survive, maybe, okay, depending on how crazy of environments they were able to stand. And then we have eukarya. These are the organisms you guys know. Eukaryotes, organisms with a nucleus. So what kind of organisms do these include? These include plants and animals, fungi, Protists, we'll talk about all of those. So these are the three categories that all of life is divided up into. Now, you might say, well, okay, they're divided up into these three categories, but is that it? No, it's not. So here's the picture if you wanted to look really quick. Um, the difference between bacteria, bacteria is on the right here. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as eubacteria, and archaebacteria. So they look very similar, but they have different characteristics on the inside, like their cell walls are made up of different stuff. Um, eubacteria have different cell walls than archaebacteria and stuff like that. So now we're going to talk about the domains. So I'm going to cover this up for a second so you listen. So the domains, and then we're going to talk about the kingdoms. So we already talked about the domains. So sorry if I misspoke there. The domains are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Okay, those are the big, big categories. Now, as we know, big categories aren't enough. Okay, we need to divide them up into smaller and smaller categories in order to classify them. So what they did is they broke down eukarya, remember eukaryotes with a nucleus, into four different categories. They didn't break these guys down into different categories because they didn't have extra categories to break them down into. They were similar enough that they didn't need to break them up. But these guys, they broke up into four categories. And the categories that are below domain, so here's our domains, these three up here, are called kingdoms. So that's what you guys did your kingdom project on, okay? Now, we included bacteria and archaea in our kingdoms because they're kingdoms too. Scientists kind of cheated, and what they did is they said, well, we can't really come up with any different kingdoms to split them into, so let's just say that they're the same. So they said this was bacteria again, and this is archaea. So if we count how many kingdoms we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so what are our kingdoms? Our kingdoms are bacteria, archaea, protists, we'll learn about those, fungi, plants, and animals. Okay, so these are our kingdoms. Now, what are our kingdoms like? Okay, so that's what our next topic is. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but just for now, we talked about our domains and then our kingdoms. So I'll let you write this down. So the eukarya, if you look at that picture, they're divided into four kingdoms, but there are six kingdoms total. So maybe I'll add that at the bottom here. There are six kingdoms total. because archaea and bacteria are included in those kingdoms. Now, as you may notice, some of these kingdoms, they have a little bit fancy names, so like Animalia, that's the animal kingdom, okay? Plantae, that's the plant kingdom. kingdom. Fungi, and then Protista is the protist kingdom. I don't expect you to know what a protist is because we haven't talked about it yet, but we will talk about what a protist is. So these are the three domains. That will be a quiz or test question. How many domains are there? There are three. 
And then these are the six kingdoms. So four are under eukarya, and then we have these two here, which we call them both domains and kingdoms. So three domains and six kingdoms. All right.